general surgery, let's talk about anesthesia. Is it safe? What is the difference between a CRNA and an anesthesiologist? Oh, so you mean general? Yes. General anesthesia is safe. If you talk to any board certified anesthesiologist, they think everything should be done under general anesthesia, right? Our anesthesiologists. If you want anything else, he will change your mind. (laughs) (laughs) For good reason. (laughs) You want to get your nails done? I think general anesthesia (laughs) is probably appropriate. Botox general. (laughs) I think it's because they are so comfortable knowing how to put patients under for a procedure, how to keep them asleep and stable, and then how to wake them up. And they're also well-equipped to handle any kind of emergencies or unforeseen things that could go wrong. That's their job. So for them, having somebody under general anesthesia gives them the absolute most control over how that patient's going to do. So they're controlling the airway, the breathing, the blood pressure, how much fluids they're getting, as opposed to, you know, doing something under local anesthesia or sedation, you know, is the patient going to turn? Are they getting nauseous? Are you, are they jittery? For some people, sedation makes them really chatty or makes them move a lot. Not everybody just takes a nap. So I think for, from an anesthesiologist standpoint, general anesthesia is the safest way to go. So it's safe. The chance of having an untoward outcome from a general anesthetic is extremely small and it goes down even more. So I'm saying in the one to 2% range, it's even less if you've already had a general anesthetic before, because some of those things that are risky or unknown, you've already gotten through one general anesthetic. So not completely a hundred percent safe, but it, it's definitely safe. Much safer to have a secured airway than not. Correct. And then with regards to the type of the person providing the anesthesia, again, this can vary from state to state, but a CRNA is a certified registered nurse anesthetist. So it's a experienced nurse, somebody who's been doing nursing for a while. They usually have to have some sort of ICU critical care background and then go on to a two-year training in nurse anesthesia school. They're nurses, so they should not be practicing independently, but there's a lot of leeway on like they're supposed to be supervised in some settings by an anesthesiologist. So they were originally created as extenders. So one anesthesiologist could monitor several CRNAs and have maybe a bunch of rooms going in an OR facility. But yeah, there's somebody, there has to be next level up of supervision So in some offices, they use CRNA, but then your plastic surgeon is your supervisor if there's a problem, which you don't need me intubating you. So I choose (laughs) to go with a board certified anesthesiologist so that I don't have to worry about that aspect of it. I mean, obviously you have to communicate with your anesthesiologist, but I want that person that is taking care of the patient from that end of things to be in complete control so that I can focus on my surgery. And I think For me, also personally, having an anesthesiologist to partner with is great for, you know, the average patient is young and healthy, has no medical problems, and really we aren't going to encounter any issues. But some of my older patients, you know, they might have a few medical problems. They have some other things that we need to work out. Like I like to decide with the person who's putting them under, like what, what baseline information do we need? You know, are there things that they can have optimized before they head into surgery? And so it's great to have two doctors looking at you from that standpoint instead of just me and some nurse who's going to put anybody to sleep that I tell them to. So I think it's a safer, much safer option. So why do people use CRNAs? Because it's cheaper because they're nurses. (laughs) Cheaper is not always better. (laughs) Yeah. And I implicitly trust our anesthesiologist. He's great. He's been doing it for a really long time. He has a lot of experience. He's runs on the conservative side of things, right? He likes to do things by the book. Very conservative. Yeah. So patients wake up so well. (laughs) Yeah. They really do. I've like worked in a couple offices where patients do not wake up well. They're super nauseous, super uncomfortable and tons of pain. And I feel like he does a really great job 
throughout the procedure of controlling all that. So they wake up. They wake up chit-chatty. They're ready to go. (laughs) Yes, they do. Yeah, I mean, that is part of, like, working with someone on a regular basis is that I know he's safe. We've worked out any potential pitfalls. And then I'm able to focus on my job. And then he can focus on his, which in addition to providing safe anesthesia is anesthesia that you wake up from sometimes looking and feeling better than we do at the end of the case, (laughs) right? I'm like, wait, why are they so chipper in recovery? Like, I feel like I need to lay down. Like, where's my Diet Coke? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Uh, Sometimes I swear they give them Red Bull or something in their anesthesia because they wake up so alert and happy. And he can't leave us because having a regular anesthesiologist on payroll, he just comes. And even though he may lose so many brain cells during the surgery from all our (laughs) chit-chatting, like, he's stuck. Yeah, he is stuck with us. He's not like, peace out. Yeah, he has really put up with all our inane conversations, shopping habits, yeah, daily he's mail. so well informed. <laughs> all right. Well, so, yeah, the moral of that story is go with your anesthesiologist. 